right, I'm going to call to order the regular meeting of the Common Council of the City of Platteville for Tuesday, December 10th, 2013, and we will start with roll call. Barbara Stackhausen? Here. Dick Bonin? Here. Ken Killian? Here. Eileen Nichols? Here. Patrice Steiner? Here. Mike Den? Here. Barbara Doss? Here. First item on our agenda this evening is a public hearing regarding adopting the updated comprehensive plan of the city of Platteville, and we will start with staff presentation. Okay, um, just for a little background, the, the existing comprehensive plan uh, was done, a joint effort of the city and town of Platteville. Um, that was adopted back in 2003, and that plan includes uh, basically a statement in it that it should be evaluated every five to ten years as needed, depending on the, the growth and changes in the community. Um, so it was decided that uh, based on the amount of uh, growth and uh, the changes that came with the Highway 151 bypass that we need to do it um, sooner rather than later. So an effort was uh, started uh, basically with the plan commission, but we had a task force of other community members uh, of the city and the township, basically anybody who had an interest in development and the future of Platteville um, got involved. We, we broke it down into uh, all the different elements of the plan went through the, the each element in detail, looked at changes that needed to be made as far as the goals and recommendations, policy statements, and so forth. Um, we did a community survey um, to get additional input, and there were community meetings through the entire process. Came up with uh, basically a draft of that plan. Um, that was actually a couple years ago. Uh, we're close to finalizing everything and realized, well, you know, we're really close to having updated census data from the 2010. It would make sense to delay this and get some additional information rather than have a new plan with outdated census information. So we kind of put the process on hold until we had the updated information. And uh, kind of about that same time, we also were working on the downtown revitalization plan. So we put this on hold until we got all that updated information. Um, once that was available, we went back through and did a final review of this document to bring everything uh, current uh, as far as we could, as far as the information, not just the census data, but the community information that's in there. So um, I think what we have is a, a plan that's uh, up to date and uh, reflects the, the goals and objectives of the community. So um, based on what we've got, um, staff is recommending approval of the updated plan. Are there any questions? Any questions? <coughs> All right, seeing none, we'll take public statements in favor, public statements against, public statements in general, council discussion. Joe, could you tell me uh, if the township will also be adopting this plan? Um, I'm not aware that they will. Um, so can you explain to me how we have a joint plan and now we have a different plan than they have? Correct. Well, how can that be then a joint comprehensive plan? Um, well, technically it's a city of Platteville plan at this point, but it says a town of Platteville since our jurisdiction involves the extraterritorial zoning area, which goes into the township of Platteville. We left it as also including the town of Platteville. But in, unless they adopt it, it will not be their plan. So then will they have a plan? I mean, my, my question is, if we adopted a joint plan, which we did, and now we're updating our part, our plan, Correct. but they aren't, right. do, do we have a joint, I mean, do they, are we leaving them without a plan? Uh, no, they, their plan, they still adopted the 2003 plan, they can continue to use that. But it's different than this plan. Correct. I have a question for section five of the ordinance. Is that gonna be holding pertinent, true? It says uh, you're about entitled city and town of Plateau smart growth comprehensive plan. Yeah, like I said, I, I left the, the word town in there because the plan does include um, areas of the township that are fall within our jurisdiction. Because of the ET. Because of the extraterritorial zoning area and extraterritorial plat review area. And that's three quarters of a mile, right? 
uh, the, the zoning is three quarters of a mile or less in some areas. The, the plat review area goes out a mile and a half. So I have a question then. Uh, based on my prior experience with this plan, uh, does it include the soil type maps in these areas? Um, it doesn't include detailed maps. We make reference to uh, maps from the USGS uh, or whatever it is that we use as because uh, my prior experience with my prior experience with this is that in that extraterritorial area when people have requested zoning uh, deviations I guess I'll call them um, that on occasion on more than one occasion it has uh, the soil type has been referenced in terms of whether it's prime farmland whether it's whatever mm. in terms of decision making I haven't had, I obviously have not read the entire document, nor have I been able to compare it to the last document line by line. Right, we still make reference to that same terminology, and uh, what we've done is passed, we use the, the basic general map that's in here and supplement it with more detailed information that we can get uh, based on the actual parcel that's under question. You can get more detailed information on the, the their website. It, it, you can't provide that amount of detail in a document like this without having a understand document that. just like this for soil type. So right. we have to no, provide the additional information as we can get it, as we need it. So have we provided a copy of this to the township? Um, regional planning did provide it uh, initially, and the response that they got was they didn't want to be involved at this time. That's not my question. After it's adopted, I question was, we will provide them a copy. Did we, the city, communicate with the town about this plan directly? Well, who would the city be? Well, you, Larry, uh, someone from the city <clears throat> communicate I did not. with the town about this plan. Well, uh, the, as I mentioned, the, the township members were involved during oh, this I know process. That. I know. And they made the decision that they did not want to take part in it. They were involved a couple of, you know, three, four years ago when we reviewed the plan. Correct. And now when you brought the plan back to finally finishing it up, they've decided they didn't want to be involved. Is that my understanding? Correct. I'm, I'm just real, I, I feel if we have a joint, and I think I, I, voiced that before if we have a joint town and city plan that then it should be a joint plan and we should have official city to town communication with the town instead of through some third party and make a pr and present this to them I don't have a problem adopting the plan I have a problem with having a joint plan adopted by one group. Well, it's no longer a joint plan then. Well, are they then aware that they don't have a smart growth plan? They do have a plan. They have a <laughs> 2003 plan that they adopted. But it would not be, I mean, it would be easy to contest that it's not valid if the other group has adopted a plan in place of it. Well, Grant County has a plan that we were not involved in. If it's easier for your for your analysis, could, should we drop the idea of making it a joint plan and just saying City of Platteville Comprehensive Plan? Well, that's what it is because it's it's not it doesn't have anything to do with the town anymore. If the town doesn't adopt it, so I don't know the, why we say it's the city and towns. Maybe plan. you're finding the title misleading or confusing. Well, and and that's why I want to know if there's been official communication with the town that says. We're adopting this plan, and by adopting this plan, we no longer have a joint plan with you. That's my question. That's your question. And the answer is they know that we have moved forward with the plan independently because they re did not intend to update it with ours, as stated several times. I understand that. 
we, we're in no position to force the township to, to update I understand their planning. that. That's not the issue. And we can't slow our planning progress but because the they don't want to participate. But the issue is, have we informed them that we... And that the answer by is yes, they are aware that non-participation, <laughs> that they will not, that we will not have a joint plan with them. Yes, the answer is yes. They are fully aware of Okay, this. they're fully aware. Okay. We have, that was we have provided notice, and whether they interpret it that way or if they interpret it some other way, we have provided them with notice that we have updated the plan. Was that information, um, did say in the last six months or the last eight or nine months, you discussed it with them, or was it five or six years ago? Well, I can tell you that I spoke to them about it um, fairly recently, within the last two months. Okay, thank you. And it was very brief. Just uh, they asked what's going on in the city, and I said we're updating our comprehensive plan, and they all nodded as though they knew it. Um, and that's the town of Platteville. I, I don't know about if we're in with other towns or not. That was the town no. of okay. Platteville. Other questions? Seeing none, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. We'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Onan? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Common Council action. I would make a motion to adopt the uh, comprehensive plan update, or, uh, comprehensive plan, smart growth plan, uh, as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. It's ordinance 1324. I know you didn't have that in front of you, but okay, we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Den? Yes. Das? No. Motion carries. Next item is consideration of the consent calendar. The following items may be approved on the single motion and vote due to their routine nature of previous discussion. Please indicate to the council president if you would prefer separate discussion and action. A is minutes from the November 26, 13 regular council meeting. B, payment of bills. C is financial report for November of 2013. D is appointment to boards and commissions. And this evening I am appointing Tammy Black as an alternate to the Historic Preservation Commission. Licenses, there are, uh, there's information in your packet relative to one and two year operators licenses and taxi vehicles and driver's licenses. Resolution 1349, appointing election workers for years 2014 through 2015, and that again is in your packet. And Resolution 1350, official appointment of 2014 city assessor. Uh, we have to make that appointment every year. We have the contract already in place. Yeah. Can you? Can you uh, tell me if it was a multi-year contract or if it's a rolling contract? It is not a rolling contract. It is a multi-year contract. And this is what year of? I don't know that offhand. I think it's the second year. This would be the second year. Of a year. three or three five? Year. Three year. Okay. Motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. My question about the assessor contract, was there a performance evaluation for the first year? No, not that I'm aware of. There have been so any complaints? Do? I don't understand how, I mean, what you have to understand as a, as a board is that the assessor is a statutory position uh, the state of Wisconsin gives them their duties and how properties are challenged. All of that process is laid out. And uh, for me, for someone to evaluate the assessor, the assessor would have to do something that's um, perhaps not scheduled under the state statutes. Um, and to follow the state statutes, if, if, if they were in some way veering away from the law, um, they'd be in a lot bigger trouble than an evaluation. You see what I'm saying? It, it, yeah, it's, well, it's so, like a. So nobody from the city does an evaluation? Well, not of the assessor. Okay. Right. Would you like to try to. Just asking the question. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second, and we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. 
Steiner? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Next is citizens' comments, observations, and petitions. We do I mean, have. Yes, I'm sorry. Can I have a moment? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, it's been brought to my attention different times in the last few weeks about the public, in other words, the Platteville citizens aren't supposedly maybe not being educated well enough on what we are doing, but then again, at the same time, we have minutes, we have TV, we have radio, we have website, and we have the Platteville Journal, and we have the Telegraph Herald with all of them items. I just can't see where the public is not being educated. And to go a little bit further than that, that also makes me worry about we have a lot of complaints, accusations, whatever about monies, and a lot of it doesn't make sense, a lot of it isn't complete, a lot of it's misinformation. So I just don't know how all of this is happening when we have all of this public uh, information out there and there's five different things I just listed. That's it. And certainly we're available as council people. If people have questions, they can call us directly. They can call staff, city manager, and, and st yep. so if you have a question, please don't be shy about calling and asking. Uh, to the city council, I'm gonna be sending a letter <clears throat> updating everyone on our budget with the annual tax bill. And in it is a phone number. If anybody has any questions, they're welcome to give me a call. I can arrange a meeting with a council member or anyone in particular of the city staff. So uh, my phone number is right in that letter. All right. Um, citizens comments, observations, and petitions. We have one person who's asked to speak, but that's about an issue that's coming up later in our agenda, so I'll save it for that. Um, I have asked Howard to note that there is a meeting tomorrow night. Yes. Uh, tomorrow night, we are going to hold a public information meeting, our first of the year, uh, regarding the uh, Broadway Street Reconstruction Project for 2014. That's specifically for that portion of Broadway from Stevens to Madison Street. Um, people should have received a letter, those people who uh, live or uh, own property along the project site should uh, should have received a letter. Uh, it'll be 7 p.m. here in City Hall in the Council Chambers. We will go over our proposed project to date and we'll be looking for any specific items and questions that people may have regarding the uh, construction project and uh, talk about any particulars that they have with their properties, uh, driveways, driveway access, if people have uh, handicapped persons that need special access, uh, if there are some issues regarding uh, stormwater drainage, other things like that that we need to know about, please, if you can make it, come tomorrow. Uh, if you can't, uh, you can certainly contact me or, or Dan Dressen at uh, Delta Three Engineering, uh, and, and we can uh, work with you on, on some of those issues. And that you said was 7 p.m. 7 p.m. tomorrow night here. Here in City Council. City Chambers. Hall Council Chambers. Okay, thanks, Howard. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, next in the packet, there are reports. Uh, Airport Commission Nichols. I have nothing to add. Frydenreich Animal Care Trust Fund Stockhausen. I have nothing to add. Historic Preservation Commission Killian. No addition. Museum Stockhausen. Nothing. Land Commission. <coughs> I don't have anything, Mike, nothing. no? Okay, nothing to add. Other reports in our packet include the airport financial report for November of 2013, city attorney itemized statement, water, sewer, revenue, and expenditures for November of 2013, the building inspector, inspector report, and department progress reports. Any questions or comments on any of those reports? I do have a minor correction. Um, Larry, this is on um, your report. I think you meant to put Eileen's name down. Um, I think it was a November 6th meeting with uh, Councillor Doss, you, and I think the IT. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. I, I thought maybe you didn't invite me. My <laughs> November 6th appointment. You just Please don't cross remember off being Steiner. There. I don't remember being there. 
Put nickels. Okay. Duly noted. Yes, Ken. I have a question about the building inspection department. Okay. What is the next step for 495 Irene Street? What is 495? It's um, a junk vehicle, garbage, <coughs> parking on lawn. There's a trial date set for. Here a number of times. So what's the next step that's going to take place? There's a trial date set for December 20th. Pardon? There's a trial date set trial. for December 20th. Okay. And January. I want to say January 7 too. Eight. 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 Excuse me. Oh yeah. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. I would like to announce that the 2014 spring election will be held on Tuesday, April 1st. We have two offices up for re-election, District 2 and an at-large office. Nomination papers can be picked up in the clerk's office during regular office hours, and the final day for filing nomination papers is Tuesday, January 7th in the city clerk's office. All right, thank you. Next item uh, is the GIS contract, which was tabled at the last meeting. Uh, staff report on that? Yes. Um, the uh, We've talked about the GIS system, geographic information system, uh, in the past, and uh, we had a request for proposal. We had a number of firms uh, uh, propose solutions. Uh, we reviewed um, uh, in detail three of the five proposals and we selected Symbiont as our proposed contractor. I believe at the last uh, council meeting it was tabled uh, to make sure that the city attorney had reviewed the contract. Uh, we have provided the contract for the city of, uh, attorney to review. He's here if you have specific questions. Uh, we're uh, I believe everything is in order at this point, and uh, so staff recommends award to Symbiont. Questions from anyone? No questions. Is there a motion? Yeah, I move to accept contract 1613 for GIS services to Symbiont of Milwaukee. Second. We have a motion and a second. We'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Den? Yes. Das? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is resolution 1351 to authorize 20,000, 2,000, excuse me, 14 salaries and rates of pay for City of Platte employees. Any questions on that? Where's the money uh, coming from to pay the city clerk increase? Uh, the proposed increase for the city clerk, I anticipate would come out of the fund set aside for merit raises for department heads. Unless of course there's other funds you'd like to transfer to that account, which would be appreciated. Well, we're not uh, applying for the All-America City Award um, this year. How, how much did we budget for that? Um, Dwayne, do you happen to know what that amount is? I'm not sure. I want to say 5,000, but I'm not positive. I, I, I'm remembering 5,000. I'm not. Oh, for All-America City? Yes, it was five. <clears throat> okay. Yep. So I, I would suggest we could transfer that to the merit pay um, fund. Uh, but that would be a different. Yeah, that's a different item. We'd have to yep. introduce a resolution to do right. that. We'd have to approve the resolution, and then at some future point, we'd have to have that on for action, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, the money's here. Okay, I move an adoption of resolution number 1351, resolution authorizing the salaries and rates of pay for the officers and permanent employees, excluding union and library personnel and city manager, for the year 2014. Second. I would amend that uh, motion. To include the uh, permanent part-time staff, the first group that totals 4,697. That would be eight people. I asked for that information last time. 
there is no information given as far as um, the total the total uh, part-time people but I think at this time if, if we can move forward with at least the, the first eight I think it would be very good so that's my motion so again that's four thousand six ninety seven and where would that money come from then? It would come from the merit pay, which is uh, 20, what, 22589 Is there a second to Ken's I'll motion? second that. Okay. I didn't understand what the first part, the first six is, what's he talking about? We have about? information here, that, that, Jan, that, I don't know if you've got that yeah. handout or not. Jan, I, we have an extra copy for you, for your packet. And I appreciate the information uh, the staff has provided. I do not favor the, the merit proposal uh, because the um, employees, the non-staff people, they, they took the uh, decrease in pay as compared to staff. So the non-staff people have not caught up yet and now we're talking about merit increases for staff. So that uh, I feel that this is uh, unfair. Uh, this is actually, in my opinion, discrimination because you're separating out one group of employees from another group and treating one group better than the other group. Well, the original motion was to um, have a pay increase for the people who had previously worked 40 hours and were down to 37, and also for salaried employees who, even though City Hall is closed on Friday, are working anyway so that their hours were not cut, but they still work the same amount of hours and probably more than 40 hours a week, which happens when you're salaried often. Uh, the other individuals that we're looking at here did not see a decrease in the hours that they worked. And I agree that they did not see a pay increase in the coming year either, but they also did not see a decrease in the hours that they worked. So I do not feel they were impacted in the same way. So I'm really not comfortable separating out some part-time staff from other part-time staff. I understand you've got permanent and other part-time, but there are certainly other people who could be considered just as, uh, you know, worthy, I guess, if that's a word, of, uh, of a pay increase also. So I'm not comfortable doing that, Ken, at this point. I would prefer to stay with the original plan. Any other comments? Well, I, I think the part-time employees, uh, they need to be valued, and I think they need to be included uh, just because we're just giving it to the, to the people that are full-time. I don't think that's where it should stop. I think it should be at least some of the part-time people are included. I guess I, I would have to say I'm not in favor of this, either separating some part time from the other. I mean, I, I've given my paper away, but some of these people, even though they're not permanent part time, they're pretty much all the. And and I'd like to see a proposal that uh, in include of where a salary could come from because I'm also not in favor of deleting the. Um, or diminishing the merit pay pool to pay this doesn't n necessarily mean I'm not in favor of a, a pay raise for part-time people but I'm not in favor of, of it in this way you don't want to include uh, people that are seasonal workers that's what you're saying I don't, I don't know I want I want more than a one night one 20 minute look at this if you don't, if you didn't want to take from the merit pool, then use the money for the American city that we we're going to use for another purpose. Well, I, I think that that's the point, Mike, is that we need to look. If we have these, uh, if we if we have these, then we need to look where that's going to come from. Right now, all of the salary ordinance money is coming from the pool of money that's there. Patrice has made a suggestion that that pool could be increased by moving the the all-american city money there now you're suggesting that 
you, we might use it for this instead. I think that's a separate discussion from this particular resolution. Okay. I know we can't spend it twice. Well, we could try. So we have an amendment to the motion. Is there any further discussion on that? Otherwise, we'll vote on the amendment. Stockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Reread the motion. Okay, to amend the original motion to approve resolution 1351 and add the first six employees of the half time and full time employees that are listed on the sheet that was handed out tonight. The first six. Yes. The only Kelly? the first six? Only the first six. Why we come up with six? You I said that. You said six. I think you said first half. Meaning oh, half? the four thousand six ninety seven. That there's a total of eight there. Uh, he, he meant the top half of the page. Okay, I can change that to eight. Mark. Um, just a minute. Didn't the motion also include to take the money from the merit pay to pay for them? Was that your motion, Ken? Yes. If you're wondering where to get the money from. So your motion is to give them the pay increase and to get that money by taking it from the merit pay pool. Right. So unless we can, the unless other we can find some other money. Because I think it's important that everybody know what they're voting on before they vote. That, that would make this a budget amendment as well to transfer funds from one area to another subject to a two-thirds vote. Take my yes back until we're clear on what we're talking about. I guess I will too. All right, um, and I'm confused. Would you read the uh, the motion, Jan, one more time, please? To approve resolution number 1351, authorizing salaries and rates of pay for the officers and permanent employees, excluding union, library personnel, city manager for the year 2014, and also add um, the senior center, two positions in the senior center. City manager, police, fire, and EMS, the part time positions. There are a total of eight. Total of eight positions for an additional $4,697. And to take that. Those are two separate motions, weren't they? The two separate motions. One is an uh, amendment to the main motion. You have to do it as and two separate an, motions an because. Amendment to the main motion to include the permanent part-time staff uh, listed on the information sheet we received this evening. And I don't know, Jan, if you've got that in front of you again now, but Ken, correct me if I'm incorrect, but as, as I understand your amendment, it would be to include the two individuals at the senior center, the uh, one person in the city manager's office, three people in the police department, one person in the fire department, and one person in the EMS department. They are permanent part-time staff. And the total amount would be $4,697. And your motion included. Um, Actually, that was it. No, he said but also and, to take and, the money. And taking from the, the merit money pool. from when the he merit. Was asked, he added that. I didn't second that. The thing. merit um, amount that is in the budget. Is that correct? Yes. That's his motion. That's not what I said. So that is the motion. Is that, all right. So now, is that what you want to second, Mike? The original amendment didn't mention where the money was going to come okay, from. Okay, well, if the second agrees, we'll take that out. I would agree if you take okay, that out. Okay, we'll just vote on uh, 4697 and not say where the money's coming from. Exactly. I'm not sure that we can do that because if we have a, a, a motion that takes money or that allocates money that's not in the budget and we had, do not have a situation where we have the money in the budget, I need advice from staff as to whether or not Larry is, to whether or not that is permitted. Or the attorney. I would like to refer this to the city attorney. He's nodding his head. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around a circumstance where you agree to spend money, but you don't have any money to spend. But we hear about that, well, there's some possibilities we can transfer from this account from All American City. If it's not in the budget, I guess you could you could say we're going to spend it, but we don't have any money authorized to pay for it. I mean, isn't that what you're saying? 
if you're not saying where you're going to get it from. Doesn't that take a second resolution to determine where it's coming from? Well, is that saying that in the future we could bring it up and, and figure out where the money would come from? Well, what happens if you decided in the future that you couldn't decide? What are you going to do with motion that said you were going to spend it? It would be an unfulfilled motion. It, would, it wouldn't have much force. You'd say you were spending it, but you didn't have the money because you never allocated it because you couldn't reach an agreement I think that's on what that. Detroit's been doing. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't want to say you can't do what you're doing, but if you don't come back at some time and, and agree where you're going to get the money from, it doesn't seem like it makes a lot of difference, you know, to approve it if you don't have a source of the money. So you're saying that if it were to pass this evening, but in a future meeting, we did not fund it? It's not in the budget right now, so it's right. not funded. We know that, right? Right. And if you don't fund it in the future, it's not going to be any more funded than it is right now. Right. Except wouldn't these pay increases then be applied January 1? And wouldn't we have already spent money then that hadn't been allocated? Well, if, if you go ahead and start to pay the expenses that you said you, you wanted to, you know, the increases that you wanted to give and you didn't have the money budgeted, eventually that account will be run out. Right. So you wouldn't run out January 1, but you probably would later in the year. So you've got till later in the year to reach an agreement on where to come from, the, where to get the money. I think this has been a problem in Detroit, spending money <laughs> they didn't have. Yeah, I, you know, I don't like the idea of bringing this at the last minute. We had a lot of work sessions on the budget, so I don't understand why this wasn't brought up earlier. Here at the last second, we're forced to make perhaps a difficult decision. It's not difficult for me, but um, I would vote no. But well, it wasn't the last minute uh, when I saw this uh, thing as far as uh, resolution authorizing salaries. I, I see where some people were not getting an increase, and I decided to look into it, and I asked the staff to provide information on who's not getting an increase, and they provided it. And so I'm recommending that uh, eight people re receive an increase that are permanent part-time people. Well, we did discuss who was going to get a pay increase at all our budget sessions, Ken, so I think that, you know, it was clear that it was not going to be part-time people. Um, How many budget sessions have we had? Quite a few. Uh, three or four. Quite a few, yep. Okay. Uh, but this now was we're not changing at the last minute again. But this was not discussed at quite a few meetings, maybe one. Okay, Brian, I'm going to ask you again, because we have a motion and an amendment, and the amendment now has been clarified by the person who made the motion and the person who made the second, that is not, does not include the language for the merit increase, according to uh, the person who made the motion and the person who made the second. Um, we started to vote on that. so. Do we continue? I with think that you should make, having now clarified what everyone's voting on, mm -hmm. I think you ought to start again and make sure that everybody still wants to vote the same way on the. Um, the on that particular motion. Yeah, on the Okay. Amendment. So, Jan, I will ask you to start the vote again with everyone understanding that the uh, and this motion. And the amendment only? You've the voted. amendment, this is, this is to vote on the amendment only. The amendment is asking again, I will reiterate that if you look at your sheet of paper, the permanent part-time staff only, and it uh, totals $4,697, there is a request on the part of Councilor Killian to increase uh, wages for those permanent part-time staff. There is no word about where that money will come from, and it is not currently in the budget. So if you vote yes, you will be saying we are going to be spending the money if you vote no, then we will not proceed with that particular uh, addition to the budget. And again, we don't have the money in the budget. But it's a, it's a matter. Vote. It's a matter of fairness. Anybody else have any comments or not comments? Questions about the the motion? Vote no. If you and vote it no, ends, it ends at the fifteen thousand seven hundred eighty-eight price amount there. 
Please. If you vote no, the permanent part-time staff will not receive a pay increase because there's no money allocated now in the budget for that. How did that happen? I thought in this conversation when we have first looked at these uh, wages that, that these were included. Permanent part-time, any part-time were not included. It was full-time employees full -time. and salary. I guess I didn't understand that. Okay. I'm glad you brought this, Ken, this worksheet. So again, if go back you vote for the motion, um, at some point we're going to have to talk about how it's going to be funded because right now there's no funding in the budget. Jan? Stackhausen? I'm confused, but sure. Bonin? No. Killian? Yes. Nichols? No. Steiner? No. Den? No. Doss? No. Motion fails. Motion fails. Now, if you would read the original motion, please. The original motion is to approve resolution 1351, authorizing the salaries and rates of pay, the officers and permanent employees, excluding union and library personnel and city manager for the year 2014. All right. We have a motion and a second on that particular question. We will vote. One quick, one quick question. Well, the city manager is supposed to be a separate. That doesn't uh, include moving any money anywhere, does no. it? Okay. Thank you. The city manager is a separate contract. Correct. It right. Says it should excluding. not be in the, in the motion. It says excluding. Excluding union and library excluding. personnel and city excluding. manager. Right. Right. Good. Okay. We'll vote. Stockhausen. Yes. Bonin. Yes. Killian? No. Nichols? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Uh, resolution 1348, approving a conditional use permit for the Family Pet Hospital at 1620 Means Drive. Staff presentation. Okay, we talked about this last time, but it'll be a request for uh, uh, the Family Pet pet hospital they'd like to relocate from their current location on uh, Chestnut Street uh, they'll purchase a lot in the industry park build a new facility it'll be used for the vet clinic uh, animal grooming and boarding um, some limited retail sales of pet supplies and it will include an outdoor exercise area um, the Planning Commission considered this request at their meeting and did recommend approval uh, staff also recommends approval <coughs> that Any wasn't question? unanimous though was it Joe Excuse me? That, the Planning Commission information, that wasn't unanimous, was it? Correct. Thank you. Any questions? Do you have a, dis, a discussion of what the Planning Commission, nothing in about the Planning Commission's? It will be on next set of minutes. It didn't, that's not part of this one, is it? I think it's the past the Planning Commission. That's all we need to know. <coughs> All right, is there a motion? I voted against it. Yeah, I would move to approve the conditional use permit uh, for a family pet hospital. Second. second. We have a motion and a second, and we'll vote. Stockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Ben? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carried. Our next item, CenturyLink property, purchase of 220 North 4th Street. Staff presentation. Uh, yes, the City Council has been discussing the idea of purchasing property from CenturyLink, um, the telephone company and across the street. Uh, the property is located on 220 North 4th Street and is currently a vacant parking lot. Uh, included in your packet is the purchase and sale agreement that needs to be approved in order to complete the purchase. Uh, and I believe there's also a map at the back of it that outlines the parking lot and the 18 parking spaces currently on the lot. We do have one individual who's asked to speak on this, so I think I will ask him to do so now and then we can have a further discussion. Mr. Christensen. Mm. Hello, I'm Rich Christensen. I live at 10 South 3rd Street in Platteville. Why is the Common Council considering spending $30,000 for something the city of Platteville has no use for? Where is this $30,000 going to come from? 
Over the last few months, the Common Council has gone through the budget process. I'm sure those citizens who watched the process and paid attention felt bewildered by the words and actions of members of the Common Council. I imagine some citizens are quite concerned about the future of the city of Platteville. So the question is, why is the Common Council handing $30,000 to CenturyLink for something the city doesn't need? Thank you. Is there a discussion on the purchase of 220 North 4th Street? Well, my only question, Larry, and I, I brought this up before, um, you were talking about an expansion of the permitted parking program uh, for this lot. I guess my only suggestion is to uh, have it for city employees or to keep other options open. Other than that, I would approve it. I actually like the idea of it being used for reserve parking because it was a it was never used for that before. So now we can take advantage of that instead of using other spots that some people would like to see us have reserve parking that are downtown closer, where n regular citizens need to use those instead of having those reserved. So now we have the opportunity to have a bunch more reserve stalls, and it's not going to affect anybody because it wasn't taking parking away that was there previously. So I think it's a good idea. I agree. How I many city employees park on the street? Uh, all of them. All of them. As I understand it, yes. Quickly. Around the park, in front of City Hall, um, down Mineral Street here. Um, there again, that opens up other spots. It, it would. Mm -hmm. Downtown retail. The, the parking or lot. employees. The parking lot being discussed is perhaps as as far or a little further away, um, we'd have to encourage employees to walk and. Oh, it's half a block. Give me a break. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> it's about city. Well, don't, park. don't even go there. <laughs> when I go to a store, I always look for the closest spot. Oh Maybe I'm just. <laughs> but they'll be here all day, eight hours. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, I I firmly believe we need the property for future expansion for this city. Maybe building. I don't know, but it can be paid for through. Uh, parking permits, things of that nature over a period of time. So there is a way to generate revenue to cover that cost. Uh, we need that property downtown for the city, especially for future expansion. That's if my we were, strong feeling on that. If we were able to lease all 18 of the parking spots available, it would bring in over $6,000 a year. So in five years, you'd have the lot paid for. If. And that's why I recommend it. Any other comments? Well, you can make a motion that would include the uh, direction to city staff to make it permitted parking or not. Well, this is though well, whoever would like to. Well, make I a make motion. a motion that the city move this property into a permitted. Well, the, I think we have to the, buy it first it's the to purchase the property. It's the the purchase. Oh, sorry. I make a motion to purchase this property. Oh. All right, so we have a motion and a second to purchase the property. The discussion seems to lean toward permitted parking, but that's not part of the motion at this point. So, okay. Just to clarify the motion, it's okay. to approve the purchase and sale agreement? Yes. Well, that's... Yes. Okay. All right. We'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Uh, yes. Nichols? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. If I may, at, at some point once the purchase is completed, I'll bring forward a resolution and you guys can debate whether you want the whole lot or part of the lot to be added to the reserve parking program. Okay. Thank Fine. you. Fine. Thank you. Uh, IT consultant contract. Staff presentation. Um, yes, the city council uh, and, and I have had several discussions about whether or not the municipal uh, IT needs of the city of Platteville uh, perhaps need some work or some improvements. Uh, we've engaged a, a firm um, called CompuNet to uh, give us a, a study and evaluate our existing system, tell us a little bit about the inventory and, and where our weaknesses might be. Uh, they came up with an evaluation report that came forward with several recommendations. Uh, at this time, we have a 
proposed contract with CompuNet um, that is before the City Council um, and we are asking you to consider the proposed contract uh, to engage CompuNet as the city's IT consultant. Um, the agreement I believe is for a two-year period and as discussed with um, uh, TJ Carter who is in the audience this evening to answer questions if you have any uh, there is a 90-day opportunity if, if things are not working out to provide notice to end the agreement um, also at this time I need to note that um, this is another example where the city uh, is looking for savings through this contract um, right now the contract is slightly higher than the amount of money we have budgeted for IT services and we're hoping that by implementing this, we're able to save money elsewhere um, and then be able to transfer money around once we've found savings in other areas. Comments? Excuse yes. me, Ellen, go ahead. So we're committing money to well, the contract more than that we have money in the budget. Uh, on the surface, that's correct. And that's why we have implemented a 90-day uh, elimination for the contract. If we don't observe the savings, we can end the contract and still not spend the entire amount. So we're assuming that we'll have um, a savings enough generated that we won't need to do the 90-day notice and end the contract. There's no penalty if we there is end not. Okay. I was looking at the this part of the budget, and when we're looking at the IT, like you said, we didn't have enough money. Would you think that you would be getting some of the savings within the, the information technology part of our budget? Uh, yes, it, some of it there, but all their areas uh, as well. Um, we're thinking we'll save staff time uh, both in, uh, as we implement processes, we'll be able to save money in the water and sewer utility, which given is a separate enterprise budget. Uh, we also believe that there could be savings within the community development and planning department, um, perhaps, uh, other ways where we can and use technology to help reduce the amount of, uh, of paperwork or uh, time needed to uh, process events, process documents. Can I ask Dwayne a question here? Sure. Dwayne, just out of curiosity, do you have any idea what money would be left in the water and sewer department? Is there a lot of money sitting there? Or? I think normally we budget about six or 8,000 for IT. Six or eight? Yeah, but that includes okay. supplies and okay, so that's everything else. That wouldn't, it goes, it's a, quite a shortfall for what we need though, right, Larry? Oh, yes, yep. Um, I'm just looking to pull up the budget right now. I believe there is the IT budget, which was around 60,000. Well, we added 20, so what was it? About 60. About 60? It's 49,000. For the IT budget? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was 60. I thought it was 57. <laughs> and part of that's labor for the, well, the body, like 42,000 that's available. Yeah, that we have available, but the actual contract itself, the oh, IT, the contract, wasn't, that, how much was the contract? wasn't that close to about 60,000? The contract being proposed is 57. 57, yes. okay, thank you. Yep. So the shortfall is 15? Yes, 57 from 42. I wish I was faster with this budget. What's the shortfall? Fifteen thousand. Oh, I'm just. I'm not sure what you know. If we have forty-two thousand in city budget, how much that's going to be used for other items besides? That's not part of this contract. I'm not sure. That's. I, I'm not. We got supplies, you know, toner and repairs and everything else. I'm not sure that's not part of your contract, right? So. All right, the information technology budget is 35,000. And then in addition to that, we transferred 20 from, from the CIP. Right. Is that correct, Dwayne? The uh, no, the total with the transfer is 49,000 and approximately seven of that is the uh, uh, 49. There's no 49 on our budget. Under the, sir, the 49841 here in 2014 budget there. Oh, I'm looking at the 13 fund. Well, whatever the scenario, um, 
if we don't have enough money, we're going to have to cancel the contract uh, when we run out. Information technology. Let's see, I can compare last year's to this year's to see where we reduced it, if you'd like. Um, Yeah, the budget for next year is at 49000 and it looks like we increased several accounts. Um, data processing is the one that went up significantly from fourteen to 29000 I'm assuming that's where you dumped the twenty. So fourteen and twenty would be thirty four thousand. Did you look in somebody else's budget that might have data processing? Not right. So data processing looks like maybe we have an error there. <laughs> the budget is 29. 29, Last year is 20. Yeah. So if you dump 20 into there, on top of 14, it would be 34. This, this is the budget here, 49,000. Right. It has nothing to do with that last year's 2013. No, I was trying to look for where we dumped the 29,000 from the CIP, or the 20,000. When, from 9,500 right here. Okay, so we must have cut that line item. Um, you know, at this point, uh, the same information stands. Uh, it's simply a bigger gap than what I had anticipated. Um, we're either short 5,000 or 15,000 based on um, the information. Uh, but having that 90-day window is going to give us the opportunity to end that contract if it gets to the point where we don't have the funds or we don't have the savings. Um, I know it's a steep call, but I'm hoping TJ can find uh, a significant savings in other areas to make this work. Thank you. Sure. Well, we just voted against something that <clears throat> we didn't have money for, and it was uh, the wages, and now we want to vote for something that we don't have money for again either. Doesn't seem right. You, you've budgeted almost $50,000 for IT services. That's going to carry you through most of the way. So it seems to me we have the option of approving the contract as provided, or I guess if someone wants to make a suggestion that we fund less or the contract is less, I know that that would be very difficult, and that's not what uh, we're expecting this evening. But um, I do take Councillor Killian's point that the money isn't budgeted. Well, all of the money isn't there, so perhaps the motion would be to uh, accept the contract, but also then to require a, um, a, a budget analysis at three months and then at six months, or uh, if it's a 90-day uh, window, I think there is money budgeted. The question is, what, will, the, will there be enough savings generated to, to fund the whole thing? So, you know, I would be comfortable by saying what, that we could approve the contract, but then anticipate perhaps a bi-monthly report as to what's going on. I don't think even we'd want to wait quarterly, so we'd want to report in Feb at the end of February, at the end of April, you know, so that, that we're sure we're keeping an eye on that. Yeah, we do need it. Because we need to have this done. Yes, we do. So, yeah. I agree with that. We have to have this done. So is there a motion out there somewhere? Well, I'm, I move that what Barb said, that we approve this contract but get a report. Barb Doss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so you're moving, uh, you're making a motion to approve the attached contract and then additionally to require our city staff to provide right. a report every two months as to where, we're on, where we are with expenditures in terms of of this contract and the amount of money that we have budgeted. Thank you, but that's my motion. I'll so. second that. We have a motion and a second. Are there, is there any further discussion? Well, I have to defend myself. Uh, I firmly believe that we need this evaluation. I think our staff are spending too much downtime when the system is not working. They also use way too much paper. I think we could really improve our whole electronic focus by using this type of study. That was my defense. Good point, Barb. 
Any other comments? Otherwise, well, we'll see what happens. All right, we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Dan? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. All right, that takes care of the action items, but we'll go on to information and discussion. And the first one is development agreement amendment for TID number five. Brian, you want to take that? <clears throat> We've sat down with the developer, uh, the s certain staff members, and discussed TID number five and the city's, what I understand to be the city's uh, intent to pay off the borrowing ahead of scheduled. Um, I think the effect of that will be to perhaps free up a certain portion of the TIF payment from TID 5 to perhaps use in other TIF, TID districts that are not performing <coughs> as well. And I think that's the, the, the broad picture. Um, to make it clear where the developer and the city stand with respect to TID number five. We want to express that the TID, uh, that the developer has complied with obligations under the TID development agreement and TID finance agreement insofar as the developer incurred project costs of approximately $6 million. There's been um, in development out in TID five or that has um, not achieved at this point the, the, the amount that was projected in the development and finance agreements, but it's well on its way. And the amendment recites some rough figures that have been expended as far as project costs and the new construction that's occurred within the district. At the time that this particular draft was submitted for the agenda, it had not been reviewed by the developer since this was put into the packet um, we've had an opportunity to do, to review this draft there will be some changes to the agreement in particular on on the third page which is the part where it says what provisions of the development agreement and finance agreement are still applicable um, We've, I, staff and the developer believe practically that all obligations under the development agreement have been satisfied. So we will be eliminating everything that's listed under TID number five in Keystone Development Agreement as being, uh, we will be saying that the TID agreement, development agreement's completed. And on the finance agreement, there will be just a few, uh, the, the, several of these conditions will remain primarily those that deal with money um, until the city pays off the borrowing or another option that's come up recently is the city simply assuming the outstanding debt that exists now rather than creating a new debt. But I'm not sure where that's at at this point. I think we're talking with bond council on that. So that's kind of a rough, a rough uh, presentation of what the do document is. It's, it's to show that the city and the developer are satisfied that this, these two agreements have been completed, basically. In other words, this is going to show a change then before it goes on to action items? Right. There'll be, some, there'll be a change to it. The substance of it's going to be pretty much the same. There were some provisions in that I, I included and kept in as in force because I, you know, I really wasn't certain exactly where we were at and whether the developer f would feel comfortable without those provisions being included. And whatever questions I had have been resolved and I found the developers comfortable leaving those out. So that's the change. Brian, would it be possible to have this letter with the developer so we end our obligations and still continue making the payment as we have it set up right now instead of 
borrowing the money to pay a lump sum and then paying on the interest because it's kind of right now it's kind of financially irresponsible to go out and borrow money at approximately 4.4 percent interest to make a payoff on the plan right now would probably pay be paid off in three years and we're at about 275 with that interest right now we can continue that for three years it'll all be paid off instead of incurring a larger debt just to pay it off sooner but we still have our letter with the developer that now th there won't be anything else going on. The policy decision as to whether or not that debt should be paid off now by the city or paid off later or exactly on the schedule that currently exists is your job to decide Okay, so but well, you can still have this letter and continue and do what we want to on the pay schedule. Is that correct? The, the agreement presupposes that the city intends to pay off the debt. If that assumption is incorrect, then this agreement needs to be modified. Okay, thank you. Because it makes more sense to pay it off, let, let the payment go at 275 on the interest for three years, and then it's a done deal instead of borrowing money now at 4.4%. Thank you. Other comments? Questions? All right, we'll look at this again. Um, rezone of 600 East Side Road. Okay, this is the uh, property the city recently purchased um, for expansion of the uh, industry park. Uh, the property is currently zoned R3 multifamily residential, which is not appropriate for an industry park. So. Uh, we're recommending uh, changing the zoning to M4 Applied Technology District, which is the same zoning uh, as the uh, industry park. Um, the Planning Commission considered this request and did recommend approval, and uh, staff also recommends approval. Are there any questions? When was the purchase? When was the property purchased? When was the closed? Just this Did fall. I don't know the fall, date. Fall. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was closed in September. Other question? Joe, the consideration is to go to M4, is that right? Correct. Is there a reason it, it's M4 instead of M2? Um, just so it has the same zoning as the remainder of the industry park. Because there's other M2 Correct. near it. Yes. And the recommendation that it be M4 came from where? I mean, is that a recommendation that came, or did we pick M4 instead of M2? I mean, why? Um, I'm still trying to determine why M4, M2. I, I suggested either option to uh, the PADIC director, and um, she had suggested that it made sense to her to keep it the same as the industry park that the city already owns. And I guess I agreed with that, so I suggested that to the Planning Commission. I think I did suggest to the Planning Commission we could do either option, but staff's recommendation was M4, and the Planning Commission concurred. And the property that it's contiguous to, is that Hypro? Uh, Hypro would be across the across Phillips the, Road. To across the, the road. And is Hypro zoned M2? M2? Yes. What? kind of how much more land do we have around that's so zoned M2 that's heavy manufacturing versus applied technology uh, yeah that would be the high pro and some additional land west of high pro and south of high pro and actually some of the land to the north of this property is M2 and the land to the east which is the industry park is M4 could you provide a, def a definition for us in the next in or at some point uh, about what's included in M4 versus M2. Sure. When you say land to the north, you're talking about next to uh, high pro? Or pro built? Yes. Okay. Other questions? All right, then we'll go on to the final information discussion item, which is sale of city property, Platteville Industrial Park for the Family Pet Hospital. That presentation on that.
enclosed in your packet is the staff note. Uh, the PayDig board met on Wednesday, November 6th to recommend an, uh, the approval of conveying the lot to Terry BB at the price of $1 per acre for the construction of a new veterinary facility. Um, it is expected that um, the property will add an additional two jobs over the next two years and that the property construction will be valued at greater than $600,000. Based on these two figures, um, uh, the the purchase price of the land uh, is adjusted as per the land price formula also included in your packet uh, to equal out to be about a dollar per acre under the land price formula questions you're always looking on I just mean everybody here looking for ways to, to acquire some more money in this particular incident because it's not something this is an existing business coming in that has already been in Platteville for a long time I talked to Melissa Pauls about it and she's the base price is seventeen thousand five hundred dollars an acre and they the PADIC did use their formula to get to the price that they offered but if we said for the seventeen thousand five hundred dollars base price for the acreage okay this would allow money and I checked because it's in a TIF that money is still allowed to be used by the city. It doesn't go into the, the TIF fund because it's the, the land price. And it's not, used, it's not being used in a TIF operation, so therefore it's not part of the value. So therefore, the, the total of this money could come into the city. You were looking tonight for a way to find some money for a couple little projects. There they are. So um, I think it's a great project, but we spent a lot of money in industrial parks industrial park producing all this land and at one point in time when they first started the industrial park they were going to sell it for a certain amount of money and it wasn't a dollar I can't remember now but it was around 10,000 I believe we haven't done that but I understand when you're soliciting business from outside of the area where you have to fight to get it to come in here you have to have some incentives and this case I don't believe falls into that department so I think the 17500 the base price, is really a fair price for that land per acre. And then you have some money to take care of some of the things you were talking about. Thank you. Your comments or questions? Well, I'm uh, interested to know what we did with the shopping news, for example, when they located from Main Street out to the, to the park, what we did with Bel Air Awning, and what, what other ones have I missed? Wonderland. Wonderland. Hmm? Wonderland. Wonderland. Yes. Wonderland. Schmidt Electric. Schmidt Electric. Queen Bee Radio. Yep. Queen Bee Radio. We need this expansion. If we don't offer this kind of opportunity to our local businesses, we're not doing due, just, uh, due diligence. You didn't do it in the past when Signs to Go asked for help. He had to do it all himself because I talked to him about it. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry I wasn't part of that decision, but. Me either. Uh, well, he went over and he didn't not go even in the in industrial, industrial park. park. He no, he went elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he went elsewhere. Rosemeyer's. Yes, he did. The weakness to, to not offering at a dollar an acre is that some, several of our regional communities would offer land at a dollar an acre. And so business may decide to move to a neighboring community instead of providing jobs and tax base in Platteville. This That's is actually, the trade off. This is actually one of those situations that I, I don't believe would happen based on the proximity of other vet clinics in the area this is probably and and i can be wrong but i'm pretty sure this is going to stay here i i'd Not like to speak to the business in galena i'd like to speak to the importance of initiatives in terms of business retention um, mm -hmm. in prior uh, positions that i've held i know that there are communities who spend almost well probably well over half their time in terms of business retention within their communities and nurturing the businesses in those communities to stay, to grow, to expand. Um, because I think that uh, that, that kind, and I think if you think about Platteville over the years, you know that there have been some um, incredible uh, growth in, in businesses that have stayed here, in fact, um, Delta 3 is an example of a, of a company that started here, was in our incubator, and now has, has grown into a 
Now, maybe they're not in the in industry park, but I mean, I think you can look at others. I mean, we all could look at the example of Dick Supermarket, not here anymore, but a company that started here in Platteville grew and expanded in the region and was good for the region. So I think we really need to think about business retention and how to uh, treat the businesses that we have here with um, care and, uh, well, just with care, so that they can grow and remain here. That's true, but the ones that you mentioned, uh, Delta 3, they paid a little bit more than a dollar an acre for well, that property true. down they, there. But they decided where to go. Exactly. Right. True. And, and their business grew as being part of the incubator building, right. which also was an incentive offered in their industrial right. park. With which one, Larry? They, 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 they grew their business as part of our incubator process, okay. which was a city-supported endeavor to help grow business. They got it. Other well, questions or comments? Like a then yeah, we I really don't need to look anymore um, and have worry about where we're going to get some little money if we continue to do this, though. So just take that into consideration. Okay. Well, I firmly believe we need to offer the best incentive we can to keep a business growing. When you look at this proposal, he's going to be offering all kinds of additional services. Now. I use those services for one thing, boarding a dog. I don't know if many of you have had trouble, but I certainly have finding an opportunity to board my dog. And that's just one component. And everything else he plans to offer, that little area that he's located in, he's obviously outgrown. Well, and so I think he rented that. He, okay. He's expanding his business by going out there from a rental. You, so that's a, he doesn't own he, that property. No. Okay, but your business has been there, or the business you bought, been there for years, right? I can't speak from there, I mean. Right, and it's in a it's in a residential area. Problem too, but uh, just knowing what the veterinary business is all about, from my personal experience, uh, since my son is going into the veterinary business, this is going to be a growth opportunity for many areas uh, so I firmly support this this project well I think it's a great project I just think that a fair market value on the land would be time to uh, to be fair then he's not in the TIF district if we do that we're spot and we're gonna lose him all right this will be on for action next time so I think everybody has something to think about lots of good comments that ends uh, the televised portion of our meeting. We are going into a work session so that the council will have a presentation on 2014 Broadway reconstruction project. Thought that was tomorrow night. Uh, no, that's that's for the public tomorrow night. We get a sneak oh. preview tonight. Although anybody who's here is welcome to stay. Um, everybody, I adjourn. I move to adjourn. We'll just adjourn. we'll adjourn this part of the meeting. We won't adjourn. We'll just uh, go off camera. And happy holidays to everybody out there. Merry Christmas. Jan, I don't want to change that. Okay. I'm giving both.